Now that we learned a bit about mutations, let's talk about how those mutations can affect the change in organisms in a population over time, otherwise known as evolution. Those mutations that occur in our DNA cause things such as variations. Now if we take a look at the word variations, variations are differences amongst members of different species or differences amongst members in the same species. If you take a look at the word variation, it has the word vary, V-A-R-Y in it, which means differences. So that's how you can remember that variations are the differences. So let's take a look at about two or three variations amongst these frogs. Now, if we take a look at our body colors, you'll notice that the body colors vary or differ amongst the Amazon horn frog in the upper left, the golden poison dart frog in the upper right, the blue poison dart frog in the bottom left, and the Pacific tree frog in the bottom right. You'll see that the Amazon horn frog has more browns and darker browns and tans and some light greens on them, whereas the poison golden dart frog is going to be bright yellow and the blue dart frog is bright blue, and obviously the Pacific tree frog is bright green. So amongst these three different species, you have different color variations. Now, if you take a look at the foot shapes, you'll see that the feet are fairly different when you compare the Amazon horn frog to the other three frogs. If you notice, the Amazon horn frog's feet don't have big suction cups at the end, whereas the poison dart frogs do and tree frogs do as well, but we can't see them because they're tucked underneath his body there. But you'll notice that there's a lack of suction cups in the horn frogs compared to the other three species. You'll also notice variations or differences in the eye positioning of the frogs. The Amazon horn frog has its eyes set up higher on the skull than the other three frogs do. The other three frogs kind of have them on the side, up a little bit, but not too high up like the Amazon horn frog does. And these variations are there for a reason. These variations lead to characteristics called adaptations. Now, adaptations are structures or traits that an organism has that allow it to survive in its environment. So these different variations that we talked about, body color, foot shape, eye positioning, those are all traits that allow these organisms to survive, reproduce, and then pass these traits back on to its offspring. So let's take a look at the adaptations, the reasons, the way is that these characteristics allow these organisms to survive. So let's start off with body color. Now the Amazon horn frog, like I said, has browns, tans, dark browns, and some greens in it. And that's beneficial and helps it to survive because it lives on the ground floor of the rainforest. So it acts as a certain type of camouflage to blend in with the leaf litter or the pile of leaves that are sitting on the ground of the rainforest. And the same thing goes the Pacific tree frog, except that it doesn't live on the ground, it lives up in the trees. If you take a look at the Pacific tree frog here, it is bright green like leaves that it's sitting on or that it will be surrounded by. So in the horn frog and the tree frog, the color of their bodies act as a camouflage. And this will be super important because it allows them to do two things that will help it survive. One, not get eaten, so that helps the organism survive. But two, it will also camouflage them from particular prey. If prey can't see them, then they're more apt to wander across their path and then get eaten by these two. So body color for camouflage for the tree frog and the horn frog. However, body color is a little bit more obvious in the poison dart frogs here. Bright yellow isn't really great for camouflage and neither is bright blue on land. But these colors are adaptations or help these frogs survive because bright colors in these, in these dart frogs means that they are highly toxic. So predators and other organisms that try to eat them have learned over hundreds and thousands of years of evolution that these bright colors are warning signals of high toxicity or high poison levels. So that's why a blue frog can get away and survive on land and not have to worry about blending in with anything because its bright colors advertise that it's very poisonous and if something is going to eat it, it's going to get very sick or it might die. And the same thing with the golden poison dart frog. So body color is an adaptation that allows these four frogs to survive, but they have different functions. Two use them for camouflage, 
to use them for a warning sign. Foot shape is different. The Amazon horn frog is a ground frog. It lives primarily on the ground, so it doesn't have much of a reason to climb, so it doesn't have those suction cups to do so. Tree frogs, if you take a look, by their name, tells you that they live in trees. So there's a necessity to climb, so they need their foot structures to allow them to grip onto the tree trunks and branches in order to get to a spot where they're happy with. Dart frogs usually live on the ground or close to the ground, but they are able to climb and some have been found high up in the trees. So they do have those adaptations to help spread their range of living. Each one of these foot adaptations allow these organisms to get into a place to escape predators or to find food in order to survive. Lastly, eye positioning we mentioned. Eye positioning is important because, again, it depends on the function of the eyes. If we go back to the horn frog, the horn frog is an ambush predator, which means it's going to hide out and hang out, not really move, and by the time something comes across its path, it'll jump out, spring on it, swallow it in that big mouth of his. Okay, so the way the Amazon horn frog works is that it'll nestle in under a pile of leaves or in some mud, and then the eyes that are high on top of the head will poke out above the leaves or above the mud while hiding the rest of the body. Now that's why the eyes are high up, so it can hide its body but still see any predators, or rather prey, walking around. And when that prey walks around, it's going to jump out and ambush its prey and eat it and live to see another day. The other frogs do not hunt like that. So their eyes do not need to be as high up on the skulls. So that's why their eye positioning is different from the Amazon horn frog. So body color for warnings and camouflage are adaptations to help the organisms to survive, to either evade by getting eaten by predators or catching food. The foot shape allows these organisms to move to places where they can more easily catch food or more easily evade predators. And then eye positioning allows them to catch food a lot more easily. So you'll notice that there is a pattern here because in order for an organism to survive, it must eat. And these variations have turned into adaptations because these traits have allowed these organisms to eat, reproduce, and pass these traits on to their offspring. So that's how mutations occur, and that's how mutations create variations in a species or amongst different species, and that's how these variations become adaptations that allow these organisms to survive. Thank you so much. I hope that was helpful.